or location? Let's talk about testing. Mm -hmm. Because when we went to go get tested, the symptoms showed up for us on, well, for me on Wednesday. We immediately went and got tested on Thursday. I was the one that was showing symptoms. My boyfriend was not. Mm -hmm. When, as I was going there, I was calling one of my friends to sort of let her know what was going on. And she made mention, well, I've heard that because he's not showing symptoms, he should wait. Mm -hmm. He -hmm. should wait a couple of days and you should get yours today, but he should wait. Mm -hmm. We went ahead and just decided to both go get tested. But what is the, the practice regarding getting tested? So you uh, and your boyfriend went exactly by the guidelines, okay? Exactly by the guidelines, okay? And, and, and what do those guidelines uh, uh, um, tell us, right? And these guidelines are um, uh, North Carolina uh, Health and Human Services guidelines, which we follow uh, throughout our county. Now, I will say that it is unfortunate due to lack of um, uh, leadership at the federal level that uh, we don't have a consistent way across the country of doing this, but I'll speak uh, for North, North Carolina. So if, if an individual has signs and symptoms of, of, of COVID-19, uh, such as fever, muscle ache, shortness of breath, cough, okay, those that individual uh, should, should get tested. An individual who is around or exposed to somebody who's either COVID-19 positive or, and or have symptoms should be tested. So you fall into that first category, your boyfriend, boyfriend falls into the se second category. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, there is um, um, the possibility that um, he, um, um, you may have been exposed a few days before and you were a few days ahead of him. And, and it's quite possible that, you know, he, he was an asymptomatic, you know, carrier, but he actually turned out to be negative, right? He actually turned yes. out to be negative. And so that's a good thing. And we want to know that, right? Why do we want to know that? Because if he were positive, right, then we would want to know who did he have contact with prior to that test being positive, right? Oh, He's trace out. contacting thing. Exactly correct. So that's why it's very important that he know not only for him, himself, right, and his health, but for the, the, the community that he's connected with. I've been saying uh, for the last uh, four months now that part of uh, battling COVID-19 as a community is that we have to look at health as a shared value. What do I mean by shared value? That the things that I do affect Ms. Jessica, the things that Ms. Jessica does affects my health mm -hmm. and that we're in this together. We're in this together. And, and it, it's really important that we create that, that shared value. Some people don't, don't believe in that, but obviously if you're on a um, uh, bus or mass transit and, and you're infected and you're coughing and sneezing and you are really affecting the health of not just those individuals that are in front of you on that mass transit, but their family members, their community, et cetera, et cetera. So I always like to start off by saying, you know, Jessica, your health is important to me. My health is important to you and how we interact in the community really is important and that we all, we're all in this together. And that's where masking comes in. That's mm -hmm. what masking is, is so important. That, that's part of the reason that three months ago, when they talked about going to phase two, you know, Vaughn and my team, we went out and we decided to mask the community because we knew as you start to open up the community, now everybody's getting on the bandwagon now and oh, masking is cool. But it was just plain science. It's just plain basic science that we, 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 we wanted to promote, which is, hey, look, if we're going into phase two, people will be going out more. Mm -hmm. We understand that physical distancing is sometimes challenging, but a mask is free, very effective, mm -hmm. and can, you can find them anywhere. We, yeah. we were distributing them. We told you folks how, folks how to make them. We're still distributing them. But the point I'm trying to make is that it's very important to create that culture of, of health as a shared value so that it's important when we go out into supermarkets. And, and that's why you see on, on these news reports, there's at times confrontation with individuals who without a mask, mm -hmm. and you have all these individuals with a mask, and the folks with a mask, they're saying, hey, look, we're in this together. 
-hmm. Just put on a mask. It's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. Put a mask on, help me, I'll help you, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll battle this together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk about during the quarantine. During the quarantine, we hit on a couple of things, um, like you were talking about making sure that you wear your mask inside the house. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a lot of people <laughs> did, didn't think about, um, that I talked to. Yep. They were like, you're wearing your mask inside the house? And I'm like, yeah, we're wearing our mask inside the house. Um, making sure that areas, common areas are sanitized and things like that. Um, but what I've heard, and I wanna know your medical advice about this. Um, so I would get sick, I would be good in the day. Mm -hmm. And then around four, five, six o'clock, it would kick in, my COVID would kick in. <laughs> and, um, and I just, uh, the fever, the chills, it would just get bad and it would run all the way like up into the morning. Um, and in the beginning, I was still trying to work. I was still trying to wake up early and do the morning show. And I was on the phone with my best friend and she goes, no, I wish you sit down somewhere and let your body rest. And, and I was like, you know what? Maybe she's right. Maybe she's right. So then I started to not work the morning show and just sort of let my body rest and it would wake up on its own and it would go to sleep on its own. And I noticed things were beginning to get a little bit better for me. Um, my, my fever wouldn't last as long. It was almost like I was just allowing my body to do what my body need to do. But I've heard other things like you have to fight that you have to fight this virus. You have to get up and you have to be moving and active and you have to do your breathing treatments and things like that. You really have to be active and fight this virus. It, is it a little bit of both? Is it one or the other? How do you act in this virus? Right. What should you do? Yeah, so great question because there are many different ways the symptoms present in many different people, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, let's start with the things that we know are beneficial, okay? So if an individual has a fever, right? Uh, Tylenol, things of that nature to break the fever. Often um, people feel really lousy when they have a fever. And mm -hmm. so often when you break the fever, they feel less uh, um, lousy. Um, also, when you have Tylenol and sometimes um, other types of pain relief like um, Motrin, ibuprofen, things of that nature, it, it often will help with the body aches and the muscle aches. And that will also make you feel a little, little bit better. Uh, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. Often individuals, they lack with water, alcohol. not alcohol, with water. Oh, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Water, thank you, <laughs> water, um, because often with fevers, you can lose, um, you can lose uh, fluid uh, through, through the fever uh, uh, temperature uh, process. And so you wanna make sure you stay, you stay well, you stay well hydrated. Um, other medications that may or may not be prescribed, depends on the individual, right? Certain uh, individuals may have certain other medications prescribed. Um, um, and so please, you know, take those medications uh, as needed. Now, as it relates to activity, that's really a kind of an individual uh, kind of kind of situation, right? There's certain individuals, remember we talked about earlier asymptomatic, there's certain individuals that feel great, they feel nothing, okay? Mm -hmm. And so if they're able to quarantine and, and work um, uh, from home and quarantine, whether they're broadcasting on the radio or doing um, uh, work on their computer, things of that nature, that's fine. Uh, there are other individuals that really don't have the energy to get out of the bed and they want to sleep all day. And, and that's okay too. So it's really, it's not a one or the other. It really depends on the, uh, the, the symptoms that the individual is experiencing, the degree of symptoms that individuals are experiencing. Some people may have some significant shortness of breath uh, that, that if they try to walk across um, the hallway or walk across the kitchen, they're, they're terribly out of breath. And so that, that's not a very good um, uh, situation to uh, engage in, you know, any type of activity. And there are other individuals that, you know, feel great and, hey, I'm, I'm quarantined at home, so I'm gonna work out every day and, 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 and build up my, uh, you know, build up my fitness and that's okay too. Yeah. That's okay too. But the key is, is, is the quarantine. That's the key. Yes, yes. <laughs> The 
time period of quarantining. Yeah. I've heard 10 days. Mm-hmm. I've heard 14 days. How long are you supposed to quarantine? Yeah. Um, so there is a lot, not a lot of movement on that, but a lot has to do with when either an individual uh, has the onset of symptoms or, or test positive. And I will say 14 days. Okay. I will say 14 days. Make it easy. Make it simple. Um, 14 days since the onset of symptoms and or if you've tested positive. If you tested okay. Positive. That, so that was going to be my next question. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's not, say I'm, say I'm symptomatic and I'm showing mm-hmm. symptoms on Monday, I go get tested on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Some people are doing don't do that don't do that but you know but say that that's what it happened when does my 14 days start when i so show- I, w- I like to make it really really easy really really concrete and i would say 14 days from the time you're tested just keep okay. it just keep it real easy keep it simple i think what a lot of the challenges and once again this has to do with lack of, of leadership coming from from the very top um of of of, of our federal government you know, when we get into these nuances, it really confuses um, the public. It really confuses the public. And so I try to keep it uh, very simple and, and, and straightforward, uh, 14 days uh, from the time of, of, of testing. Now, some people will say, well, I didn't get tested and I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure I had COVID because of all the symptoms I had. Then we'll go 14 days from the time of their symptoms. Okay. Yeah. And after your 14 day quarantine is up. I know I sent you a text message asking you, can I go get my test? Can I go get my test? I wanted to go get tested on day 15. And to yeah. be honest, I did, I did. Even though you told me I'd wait a couple of days, I, I was trying to get out. So when do you go get tested after your 14 days? So there is no mandate to be tested after you get COVID. Um, the, the, the part of the reason that, at least I'll sp- speak from the healthcare worker standpoint, right? Okay. We test our workers, our frontline workers, not doctors, nurses, et cetera, um, who've been exposed to COVID and had COVID. We test them because they're going back to the front line and we want to make sure completely 100% there's no opportunity for, for them to, 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 spread, um, uh, to spread COVID. But for the uh, lay person, there's really no need to test oneself, especially if the symptoms are gone, fever's gone, feeling back to base, or nearly back to baseline, you know, um, you're feeling yourself uh, and you've been isolated for 14 days. There's really not a need or mandate or um, an indication to test or do a follow-up test unless it's being dictated by a place of employment. Okay. Um, um, jobs and things of that nature. 